All right, in this video, we're going to begin looking at the different phyla of animals, and we'll begin by looking at periphera, which is going to be the sponges. We'll start with just some basic info about sponges today. Before we do that, we need to talk about animals in general, how animals originated. Um, there are a couple of things that are um, unique to animals, or not unique to animals, but um, something that makes an animal an animal and separates them from other things that aren't animals. And one of those things is multicellularity. Uh, the fact that uh, anim all animals by definition are multicellular. And um, so this sort of trait had to evolve in order for the first animals to come around. Multicellularity has advantages. Um, first of all, you have an increase of surface area to volume ratio so that you can do more work, more metabolic rate or more metabolic activities. Um, larger cells tend to be very inefficient at getting in materials and getting rid of waste. Also, DNA overload becomes an issue with larger cells, meaning that the DNA is not able to serve um, the entire cell because there's just too much cell. And so... Um, as organisms are become multicellular, they, it cuts down on this. It also allows for larger organisms in general, and larger organisms can exploit a lot more resources than really small organisms. And so this became a very successful uh, trait among living things and obviously has been very successful in the world. Um, cell specialization, this also allows for specialization. So not all cells are doing the same thing. Some cells are doing other things. It's kind of like how civilization arose. Um, you know, once everybody was doing different things, we were able to create cities and be very successful. And so, uh, multicellularity, very, very similar kind of thing to that. And so, uh, the very first animals are not first animals, but what we think uh, shares a common ancestor with the first animals. And so, again, looking at our study in phylogeny, you have this common ancestor with animals and other things, and that would be the choanoflagellates. Choanoflagellates are eukaryotic organisms. They use a flagella for propulsion. They look very similar to the feeding cells of sponges. And so this is why they're thought to be um, a common ancestor with, um, with sponges and all other non-animals. All right, so a little bit more about the phylum periphera. This is the simplest kind of animal. Um, so when we talk about sponges, they only share the most basic animal characteristics with all other animals and they are multi they're multicellular they're eukaryotic they're heterotrophic and they have cells without cell walls that is pretty much the only characteristics that sponges have in common with all other animals sponges are sessile meaning that they do not move so being an animal you're not required to move if you're an animal um, so note note that um, not all living things move and not all animals move and sponges are an example of this. Now they do have one of their life stages do move and that is their larvae. Larva is just a younger stage. I could um, kind of think of a, the youngest st um, stage of development is considered larvae. And um, basically the sponge larvae will find a place and kind of park there for their life. Um, they attach to some sort of something on the surface or some kind of rock or something like that. And that's where they'll live out their days. And they basically sit there and they filter water through their pores. And this is pretty much how they do everything. This act of filtering water, which we'll talk more about in the next video. They filter water, which allows them to eat and do circulation and everything that they do. These cells, choanocytes, are the uh, flagellated cells that were similar to the choanoflagellates. And this is these are the cells that cause that current of water to go through their body. And again, we will talk more about them. But this is one of the uh, claims to fame of sponges is that they have these specialized cells. They don't have a lot of specialized cells. In fact, they they just are very simple, very simple organisms, not with, with not not even true tissues, but they do have these specialized cells. Also, sponges are asymmetrical. So go back here. They do not have any sort of body symmetry to speak of. 
which makes them again very simple. So as far as um, their role in the ecosystem, most sponges are commensals, meaning that uh, other organisms use them to gain some benefit, but the sponge itself doesn't really gain any benefit from that. Um, some sponges do house um, microalgae and cyanobacteria. Both of these organisms are photosynthetic organisms, and so this allows them to... Um, have almost like a mutualistic relationship with those organisms. The sponge provides protection. And even uh, there are some studies that suggest that the sponges can even provide a source of light because of the light reflecting off the pieces of the sponge skeleton. And then, of course, those organisms emit oxygen, which the sponge will use to do life. Speaking of sponge skeleton, um, this sponge skeleton is basically made up of two sponges parts, the spicules and the spongin. The spicules are composed of either calcium carbonate, um, which is a really fancy word for chalk, uh, or glass, silica. And so uh, we'll talk about some glass sponges too. And then spongin is um, essentially a collagen network. That collagen is just a type of protein. And so it kind of forms this um, kind of, uh, I don't know how to describe it really. They're pretty, pretty solid feeling, but they are squishy too, but they have, you know, almost these spicules. You can feel them. This is a picture of some spicules here. You can kind of see another here. They have these embedded spicules in there. So they do have some, some roughness about them. Um, the first sponge fossils date back to the early Cambrian period. So this is, um, way back in the, um, you know, near the first, near the Cambrian explosion where the first animals came about. Sponges are divided into three classes. There is Calcis spongiae. Um, they are basically, their claim to fame is that their um, spicules are made of car calcium carbonate. There's Hexactinellida. Hexactinellida are glass sponges. And so we will talk about those. And then Demospongiae, this represents 95% um, of the sponge species in the world.